Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name I come to you to share his power as he told me to. He said, freely, freely you have received. Good morning. Oh, we can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Amen. We greet you in the mighty and matchless and wonderful name of Jesus the Christ this morning. We want to welcome you who are in our worship experience live, and we want to thank all of you who are watching us via our social media networks. I'm Reverend Robert Johnson. I'm the pastor of Messiah United Methodist Church of Lafayette Hill, and we're going to have a good time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. So if you came for a boring service, you might as well get in your car, get in the rain, and leave now. <laughs> Amen? But we are here to clap hands, and we are here to have a, a great time in the Lord. Do me a favor, clap your hands, stomp your feet, take your shoes off. Amen? Do whatever you got to do. You're in God's house, and everyone is welcome in the Lord's house, because we are all somebody, because God doesn't make any jokes. Amen? Amen. Let us continue in worship. Please stand and join me in a call to worship. And I am not Heidi Mears. <laughs> I am Laura Chang. Come let us worship God. Come let us worship our Creator. God is the great sower, scattering seeds of life in abundance across the earth. You are the soil sower plants created to nurture and sustain the seeds of God's life-giving love. God is the great gardener, tilling and cultivating our soil with love and grace. You notice the rocks and thorns in our soil and cause the divine and love and grace to transform us to the soil. God is the great life-giver, sowing seeds and tending the soil to produce the fruit of abundant life. May we nurture and grow in bearing the fruit of flourishing and abundance for all God's creation. Amen. Please continue standing for our first hymn, number 369 in the red hymnal, Blessed Assurance.
Please be seated. Come to an attitude of prayer. O oh God, our guide and guardian, you have led us apart from the busy world into the quiet of your house. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in truth to the comfort of our souls and the upbuilding of every good purpose and holy desire. Enable us to do more perfectly the work to which you have called us, that we may not fear the coming of night when we shall resign into your hands the task which you have committed to us. So may we worship you not with our lips at this hour, but in word and deed all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. This morning's first reading comes from Psalm, the book of Psalm 119, verses 105 through 112. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. All right, it is our children's time, and I am waiting for here. Here he comes. Here he is. There you go. Come on closer. Come on closer. Come on, come on. Slide on up. Slide on up. How y'all doing? Good? You had a good week? What you do this week? What did you do? Did you play? Did you had a you had a good time? Stayed out of trouble? You didn't answer that question. Okay, today I'm going to talk to I'm going to talk to uh, a little bit about a, a boy, okay, or, or, or a man, and his name was Jonah, okay, and Jonah, he was a prophet. He was somebody like you know, just like me. He would you know he would tell the people all about God and everything else like that. But Jonah, Jonah had a had a job. Your mom and dad got jobs, right? They go to work, right? Don't they? Yes? No? I hope they got jobs. <laughs> and his job was to go to talk to some people he didn't like. He didn't like these people. Jonah did not like these people at all. Jonah was, Jonah was mad. He said, why, why you want me to talk to these people I don't even like? And God said, Jonah, go do it because it's, it's, it's going to be good for them to hear this word. And Jonah said, I'm not going to do it. Jonah stomped his feet. He said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. God said, Jonah, if you trust me, I'll, take, I'll make everything all right. You know how you like to trust your mom and dad, right? And they, and they, and they make everything all right, right? Yeah. Right. See, he's, he's right with me. You're good. You're good. You're, he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Sit up. Sit up. You need help sitting up? <laughs> anyway. So what happened was Jonah, what happened was Jonah didn't do it. And so Jonah was in the boat. And when Jonah was in the boat, this big fish, and you know what a whale is? You know what a whale? Uh -huh. A whale. 
a big whale came and swallowed Jonah. Could you imagine that? He swallowed Jonah. And Jonah stayed in the belly of that whale. And when God got ready, God made the, made the, uh, made the whale burp. And when he burped, out came Jonah. And when Jonah came out, guess what? Jonah said, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Just don't put me back in the well. And Jonah went and talked to the people. And you know what happened when he talked to the people? The people found out that God's way was the best way. So I say all that to say this. I need you to listen to your mom and dad because they know what's right. And then when you get older and you, and you have a relationship with God, listen to God because he's no, he, know, he knows everything. But do me a favor. Don't go fishing and get swallowed by no big fish. <laughs> Obey God and he will direct your path. Y'all ready to go back? You ready? All right, give me a pound. Give me a pound. All right, see y'all later. Let the church say amen. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 9 and 18, 18 to 23. We got it? Okay. And that same day, Jesus went out to the house and sat by the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood, stood on the beach. And he told them many things, parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some of the seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. And other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, and since they had no depth of soil, and but... When the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And let anyone with ears listen. Hear the parable of the sower. And when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word immediately and receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble and persecution arises on, a, on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what is sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares for the world and the lure of wealth, and they choke the world of word, and it yields nothing. But as for the one that was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Let the church say amen. I've been working on this word this week. I've been working on this word. And if you would, we're going to go to, to our text this morning, which is Genesis. And after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of, Mor of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, he said, here am I, my son. He said, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order. The bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He, and he said, here am I. And he said, do not lay your 
hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your, son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. And Abraham took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the place the Lord will provide, as it, as it is said to this day on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we come before you right now in the midst of this time of preaching and this time of, 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 of knowing your word and this time, Lord God, of just being in your presence, we ask that you will bind us together. Give us, Lord God, what is needed for the journey. But more than that, Lord God, that you will be with us as we hear, as we act, and as we run and give the word to those who need it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In your, in your bulletin, in your bulletin, you have this little sheet, this little sermon note sheet. Amen. It's not there for show. Write in it. Chew on it this week because it just might help you as you journey to work as you deal with your children, as you deal with your enemies, and as you deal with your friends. Uh, this, this might help you uh, as you go through your journey today. All right. I had some problems with this. I had some problems with the text today. Because as I read the text today, I got really upset. I got really upset at God, and I got really upset at Abraham. I got really upset at Sarah. Because God, God had said, to Abraham in the beginning, he said, leave your father's house, go where I'm going to show you, and I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And Abraham did that. But somewhere along the line, Abram, name got changed to Abraham, which means that there was a transformative process, if you will, between God and Abraham. God and Abraham had this, had this, had this wonderful, wonderful thing called, called a relationship where they talked to one another. Could you imagine what it is that in the middle of the night, you're laying in your bed and all of a sudden God calls your name? If you're like me and somebody called your name in the middle of the night and ain't nobody there but you, we got a problem. Amen? You can, listen, he said, Abraham, he said, here am I, Lord. Now listen, if God would say, Robert, I would say, hold up. Wait a minute. Don't be calling me home just yet. I ain't ready. I'm ready for the local call, but when God calls us long distance, we ain't going to deal with that. Abraham, Abraham said, listen, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. The tough part for us is that when God tells us to do stuff, if it doesn't match our agenda, sometimes we're like, that can't be God. Because God calls us to live outside of our comfort zone. And if we start living outside of our comfort zone, we'll find out that the first point is true. When we start living for God, provision, God will provide provision for my daily needs. Listen, when you woke up this morning, did you hear what I said? You woke up this morning. God provided you with another day's journey. And yeah, it's raining outside, but aren't you glad that you were alive to see the rain and feel the rain? Aren't you glad that God gave you another opportunity just to be in his presence? Aren't you glad that from last week to this week, he kept you from hurt, harm, and danger? Do you understand last night somebody's house got broken into, but it wasn't your house? That the, that the alarm rang, but they weren't alive to answer it, but you were. Don't you understand that you had a roof over your head and food? Don't you understand that God has provided for you no matter how old you are? God has been providing for you since you've been born. Think about that for a minute. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have problems. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have struggles. It does not mean that the enemy is not going to come in and try to frustrate you. But you've got to understand what Abraham understood is that no matter what I go through, the God will provide. Now, write this down. Write this down. I'm going to give you something to write down. Watch this. God's provision does not depend on me. God's provision does not put, that's, that's probably my phone or somebody's phone. There's some, there's some alert going off somewhere. Somehow, don't worry about it. It's a flash flood or something. It's a tornado warning. God will provide. If it's 
the tornado have I hit for the gym? <laughs> That's why God provided a gym. <laughs> I forgot. No, 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 no. God's provision does not, does not um, depend on me. Let me tell you why I say that. God's the, because God's going to provide for you because he loves you. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter and depend on you. We know there's a tornado coming. We got you. God's provision only depends on whether or not, watch this, whether or not you trust him. Abraham trusts God. And when Abraham trusted God, God said, I'm going to provide for you. He says, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how bad you get. It doesn't matter how rough stuff gets. God says, I'm going to provide. God says, I'm going to provide for you when you don't even know you need provision. Oh, let me say that again. Don't you know, can I be clear? Don't you know there was some stuff that you that never hit your that never hit your way? Don't you know there's some stuff that never hit you? Don't you know God made detours? It's the stuff that could have took you out. But God said, because you trust me, watch this, with everything. Everybody say everything. When you trust God with everything, God will provide for you in ways you never thought you would be. Places that you never thought you would go. Give you things, even as some of you, listen, some of you have been around a lot longer than I have, but when you look back over your life and you see a set of footprints in the sand, you know, you understand that's when God carried you through. And some of you know, listen, some of y'all know that you said God work, God takes care of babies and fools. And you say, I ain't no baby. And you've been foolish. I've been, fo- I've been foolish. Anybody here been foolish? But because when you've been foolish, watch this, God still said, I'm going to provide for you. Not just you, Heather, but everything that's connected to you, God said he shall provide. So for your son and your husband and and, and everything that's connected to you, God is going to provide. Don't you know, I like to call it, Kristen, I like to call it holy dandruff. Holy dandruff. Holy dandruff means that sometimes when you're sitting next to somebody that has dandruff, some flakes may get on you. Everybody say amen. Y'all act like y'all never had dandruff. I can't have dandruff anymore. (laughs) But don't you understand that sometimes the people who are connected to you get blessed because they're in proximity of you? Think about that for a minute. Somebody got a job because of you. Somebody was blessed because you smiled at them and talked to them. Somebody got blessed because you sat next to them at a lunch table. Somebody was blessed because you hugged them this morning. And you are the provision that God used to make that day a little bit brighter. Let's go to point two. Let's go to point two. Let's go to point two. There we go. The two is God will make provision for tough times. For tough times. Let me be real. Abraham had a tough time. And Daleen, the reason why Abraham had a tough time is because Abraham got disobedient. Because God said, Sarah going to have a baby. Abraham said, she old. (laughs) Ain't that what the text say? Abraham said, she old. I'm old. It ain't going to happen. And God said, wait a minute, it's going to happen. He said, no, no, no. And then Sarah, Sarah jumped the gun. Here we go. Sarah said, because I don't have an heir for my husband, I'm going to give him a my, my handmaid, Hagar, and she, but guess what? God didn't promise him a son through Hagar. God promised him a son through Sarah. And I got news for you. When you think that your time is up, watch this. God is saying, I am the keeper of time. Can I, can I be real with you? I'm, I'm going to say something. This might, be, this might not be good English, but I'm going to say it anyway. It ain't over yet. No matter how tough it gets, it's not over yet. Everybody say, it's not over yet. You might lose your job, but it ain't over yet. You might have some some economic downfall, but it ain't over yet. You've got to trust God in all things. And when you start trusting God, God begins to open doors and make ways and do things for you. It's not over yet. You may have tears in your eyes, but it ain't over yet. And the reason why it's not over is because God will provide for you in the toughest of your times. November, November 23rd, 1994, my mom died. 
the day before Thanksgiving. Toughest time of my life. I was pastoring a little church in Ohio. And I, and I wasn't going to come home for, for Thanksgiving, but I came home. And all of a sudden, I come home, and I've had only been home two days. I went out, came back, mom gone. How do you trust God when your rock is gone? Can we, can, can, can we talk for a minute? Being a Christian doesn't mean that everything's going to be right, but we serve one who can make it right. And I was ready to give up on ministry. And God said, write this down. God said, I will provide for you when it doesn't make sense. When it doesn't make sense. I got, I got back to school, did what I had to do. I didn't even want to graduate. They lean, I did not want to graduate because mama wasn't going to be there. But God said, not only will you graduate, but I'll have a church waiting for you when you come back to Philadelphia. I said, come on, Lord. He said, listen. He said, you made the sacrifice. Let me carry you the rest of the way. Sometimes, and sometimes, when loss happens, because all of a sudden, Abraham had an issue. And so, the reason why he had an issue was because God said, listen, he ain't the promise. Ishmael's not the promise. Isaac's the promise. And Abraham's standing there saying, but I got two women in the same house that can't get along, Lord. What, what am I supposed to do? He says, listen. He says, I'm going to take care of Ishmael. Just like I took care of you. You just take care of Sarah and Isaac and I got the rest. Everybody. Let go and let God. You can't. Everybody cross your arms. Watch this. This is not a receiving position. You cannot receive anything from God as long as you're closed. Amen? But, come on, when you open, God can pour into you what he needs to pour into you for that particular season. We're so closed to some things that God is saying, open up and I'll bless you beyond measure. I'll give you things. Watch this. God is saying, listen, if you need it, I got it. If you need it, not if you want it, but if you need it, I got it. And I'm going to supply all your needs. And I'm going to provide for you even though, watch this, some of y'all don't even understand how you got here today. You don't understand. If you look back over your life, you say, well, daggone, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have the things I have. It's nobody but God who blessed me. He blessed me with a house. He blessed me with a husband. He blessed me with a wife. He blessed me with a career. I got a little car. I got a little bit of money. I'm, I'm just speaking for me. I only got a little bit of money. But all my needs are provided for. Is, is, am I right? You got everything you need, don't you? And guess what? Sometimes what we want will wreck what we need. Ooh. Let's go to third, please, so I can get on out of here because, you know, we, we, we got stuff to do. Provision to hold out and hold up. Here we go, y'all. Write this down. Three time you move forward. The enemy will pull you back. Every time you move forward, the enemy will pull you back. Now, I'm going to say something. Listen to me carefully because this is going to help somebody this week. Please listen. There's somebody who I'm talking to right now in the room who's having a tough time at work or home. you got some people in your life right now who you know don't like you. Amen? you got some folk who just are making your life a living hell. And they don't like you. Shh, don't tell nobody I told you this. Because when I, when I write the book, you'll get it for free now, but when I write the book, you got to pay for it. It's not the fact they don't like you. It's the fact they want to be. They're looking at your life and they're saying, well, why is she so blessed? 
Why is he so blessed? Why every time he turns around, he's got a smile on his face? Why is she so chipper? Why am I so miserable? It's because, watch this, if they only understood you when you weren't this way. Help me somebody. If they only understood what it took to get you to this point, all the stuff you had to go through just to be happy today, they would hate on you. I don't know. Amazing Grace says, through many dangerous toils and snares, I have already come, and Grace has brought me safe thus far, and Grace will lead me home. I got news for you. What you see in front of you took 50-something years to get to this point. And if they knew your story, who has a story? If they knew your story, if they knew all the hardships and all the, t all the trials, if they knew every night you had to cry, if they knew the nights that you struggled, if they knew the times that folk left you, can I get a witness up in here? If they knew the times that you were in debt, if they knew the times that you had to go through, if they knew everything about your story, they would say to themselves, I know why they can make it, because the God of provision has made a way. What's going to do about this? What's going to do about this? Well, from a place called South Philadelphia, South Philadelphia, every South Philadelphian has a walk. I've seen it now my son. My son has a South Philly walk. Wasn't born in South Philly. But we got a South Philly stroll. Every Christian ought to have a stroll. Every Christian ought to stand up tall with, his, with, 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 their, with, their, with their shoulders back. You ought to be able, you ought to understand that the guys that you serve are so able that you have not secret service protection, but you got heavenly protection. So you great going to a meeting and all of a sudden God done swept the room. God done told demons and devils they can't mess with you. God done said, not only am I going to protect you, I'm going to protect your kids. Not only am I going to protect you, but I'm not only Christian, he says, every time your husband's go to work, I'm going to protect him. And every time you go to work, I'm going to protect you. Don't you know, every time you go on vacation, God has said, I done checked the airline, I done messed with the pilot, I done did everything. Don't you know that God says, don't worry about the bills this month because I got it. And you're trying to calculate. And God is saying, you don't understand that the mere, mere fact is that, watch this, I will always, watch this, elevate you, never wreck you. You just got to have a vision to hold up. Hold up against the onslaught and hold out in the midst of the storm. Shucks. One of my favorite movies. Now, y'all ain't going to watch it, so I'm just going to let you know now. One of my favorite movies is I'm going to get you some. Watch it. It's a good movie. In the movie, one of the protagonists says, every superhero needs a theme song. Okay? Every Christian ought to have a theme song. You ought to have a song that when stuff is getting tough, you can sing. For me, for me, my Christian theme song is Pass Me Not, O Gentle Saints. When stuff gets rough, D, I start singing, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Saints. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling me, do not pass me by. And when stuff gets real rough, I sing and say, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling me, do not pass me by. Sometimes in the midst of it, I forget what was bothering me because God has already came in and made for me. Before I take my seat, I got a question. Have you ever worried about something and then 15 minutes forgot what you were worried about? Huh? Seriously, have you? You got all worked up and then 15 minutes later, you done forgot what you was worried about. And do you know why? That's when God comes in and whispers in your ear and says, don't worry, I got this. God will provide in every single aspect 
God will provide. Don't just listen to it. We got to teach it to our kids. If they stop, listen. The reason why some of our kids can't appreciate anything is because we try to give them everything. If struggle was good enough for you, it's good enough for them. Because some of my best lessons to learn is the midst of struggle. Y'all clap. Y'all clap. All right, it's time to take off, right? I'm getting good. I, ain't, I, I haven't even looked at the daggone uh, boat, so I'm getting good at it. I'm getting good at it. Time to, it it's, time, it's time for offering. If you have your offering, lift it up. Lift it up. I'm going to bless it right now. Just lift up your offering. I'm going to do something that I can touch it. If you, if, if you have an offering, just lift it up. Just lift it up. If you don't have an offering, just lift up your hand. If you don't have an offering, just lift up your hand. It's okay. It's okay not to have an offering. Because sometimes your life in, in service to him is offering enough. Everybody bow your heads. Father God, I ask you to bless this offering right now. Bless those who don't have anything physically to give, but they've given their life, they've given their life in service to you today. Now, Lord God, I ask you to be the God of increase. Increase our faith. Increase, Lord God, our love for you. And increase, Lord God, our mission to the world. And bless this offering of those who shall receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to lift it up, and then I'm going to consecrate it after. But I wanted, to, I wanted you to hold it up. Because I want you to let God see how much you trust him for provision. It's a necessary thing in order to get the first component, which is calcium. That's right. They work in combination with each other. Now, there's many more practical applications of this CalMax formula. First of all, like I said, you drink it so it gets into your system. And one of the first things we use it for in our clinic is for people who are under a lot of stress and they can't sleep well at night. It works better than anything I've ever seen for people that have trouble sleeping because it relaxes your body. You do actually feel the relaxation oh, after you drink the and we drink it no more it's strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk, let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee.
of sleep, the low energy, pain and stiffness in your muscles and joints, your body is telling you it's lacking the calcium and magnesium it needs to handle the effects of increased stress. nothing to lose because you can try Calmex absolutely risk free. So that number to call is 1-800-823-8219. I'll give it to you again. It's 1-800-823-8219. Todd dad is getting surgery well, if you're just joining us, I... next week. And we're going to be praying for him as well as uh, Daylene's friend uh, Suzanne uh, whose mother is being treated uh, for for cancer. We're also going to be praying for those who went to, who left uh, yesterday to go to uh, Redbird Mission. And man, I think they were a little bit shocked. I pulled up in a lot to pray for them, but they didn't know I was coming. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that they got off um, uh, right with the Lord and understanding that. Remember that on Saturday also that we're having the Walter Memorial Service viewing from, I mean, sorry, visitation is from 10 to 11, and service is going to start at 11 o'clock, and that the luncheon will be private for the family, and we ask you to keep the Walter family in your prayers, and from what I understand, interment will be in, at a later date in our memorial garden. Let us pray. God, here we are. And Lord, we pray that right now that as we are inundated, Lord God, with a lot of things that are going on, we pray for Todd's dad as he goes in for surgery. And Lord God, we know that you're a God of divine protection and a God of provision. Provide for him, Lord God, what he needs for this phase of the journey. Be with the doctors and the nurses. Lord God, I ask you to... Um, just bolster his faith in you. The Lord, that you're going to make everything all right. We pray for Suzanne's mother who was being treated uh, for cancer. And we're praying also for my sister-in-law's friend, Lord God, who 34 years old, who has been stricken with pancreatic cancer and just given a few weeks to live. We pray that Lord God, in the midst of all of those who are suffering sickness and illnesses of any sort, that God, that you be the great physician, heal bodies. Lord, as those who've gone to Redbird Mission, Lord God, to build homes and to spread the love of Jesus Christ, not just through their hands, but Lord God, through the love of their spirit. That God, that they would not just come back, Lord God, with calluses and bruises and aches and pains, but they'll come back with the joy of the Lord, knowing that they helped someone in need at, that, at, at their most difficult of times. And Father, if I could, I'm going to pray for Messiah. I'm going to pray for our church, Lord God, as we, uh, Lord God, have uh, embarked on a new vision and a new way and a new path. And that God, that we know that it's not what we want, but it's your will that's going to be done. And so that, Lord God, as we come in the midst of this family, and it truly is a family, and Father, I thank you for this church family that has opened up hearts and arms and Lord God, more than that, it made me and my family feel so welcome. Please bless our church so that, Lord God, that we might be, Lord God, not just the church on the hill, but we might be the church that goes into the valley 
and call those in the valley and comfort those in the valley. And they can look up and not just see a church on a hill, but they can see a family on a hill that will embrace everybody in this place. Give us peace for the journey and bless these your people. In Jesus' name we pray. As we pray, pray the prayer that the Lord prayed toward his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. Before, before, we, before we leave this place, and isn't it wonderful that here we are and we're done service and the rain unstopped? Amen. The Lord will provide. Amen. Let me thank Kristen. I want to thank our organist. I want to thank Sister Chang. I want to thank Daylene for um, lifting up our offering. Uh, and, 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 and the nursery staff, I want to thank them as well. Amen. But more than that, I want to thank you for coming. Amen. Get yourself. Y'all are looking good today. Get yourself a... And for those of you who are watching us, if, if, if you think it's not robbery and God has blessed you in this service, we're going to ask you to go over to our website, hit that give button, sow a seed into this ministry, and we will uh, see you next week. Amen? But Kristen's going Kristen's to sing. Amen? And then I'll bless you out. Well, not bless you out, but I'll do the blessing. <laughs> Three sixty four because he lives. <laughs> See you.
This week, don't sweat it. God will provide. In everything that you need, in everything that you, in everything that you desire, God will provide. It may get tough, but God will provide. And if you listen to anything I said today, get your theme song ready. Walk into the room of confidence to know that if God is for me, then be against me. Now may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Blessed Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. And you see that tall African-American man standing there with, just looking around? That's my buddy, Reverend John Coleman. Make sure you greet him on the way out. I will see you next week. Be blessed until we see each other again. Amen.